Welcome, Southwest Conference Fantasy Football League. So, gearing up for a brand new season. We cut a video last week, just kind of seeing where you guys were at, how y'all felt about the uh, draft date. I heard back from just about everybody, a couple of y'all. Y'all been phantoms out there. I'm starting to wonder what's going on, hoping maybe y'all didn't get some new cell phone numbers or something like that, and I don't have it and you don't have mine, but... Either way, guys, um, this is what we're looking at. August 26th, and we're looking at 2 p.m. Central Time. So I'm pretty sure all of us are Central, with the exception now of one who is uh, going to be Mountain Time, I do believe. So, um, yeah, so that would be 1 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, so 2 p.m. Central on Sunday, August 26th. I'm looking forward to it, guys. I'm really pumped about this season. I've had a lot of fun uh, these last uh, three seasons that we've played, even though I haven't won, uh, despite the fact I would have won in the second season, just saying, still kind of sour about getting locked out of my team for three weeks. But anyway, I'm never going to let that go. Y'all knew that. But look, I'm really excited about it. Uh, the only thing that we were seeing was the 25th uh, was problematic for one of our members and wasn't going to be able to... Uh, do that and any other day was going to work while some of y'all despite a little inconvenient the 26 could work for you and I really appreciate your um, I, I guess your your ability to uh, compromise on that and try to make something work you know for the totality of the league that's really cool y'all that are able to make that uh, Sunday work for you so that we can have a draft if everything goes accordingly, our drafts usually last around an hour, hour ten, something like that. So it shouldn't eat up a big chunk of your day. You know, if you remember right, a couple of years ago, um, for some reason around um, round 12 or 13, something like that, the whole draft agent just crashed on the site. Uh, I've been playing fantasy on NFL since 2010. That's the first time I've ever seen something like that happen before. Um, and we handled that pretty well. So barring no problems, the draft should really take, you know, around an hour, hour 15 tops, something like that. An hour and a half people just really take all day with making their picks, but I don't see that happening. So if you haven't been doing it already, be thinking about your mock drafts, guys. I know I've been thinking about mine. I haven't really been able to dive in as deep as I would like to. And we're only one uh, preseason game deep right now, the Hall of Fame game. And how about that Lamar Jackson, huh, man? He's got a lot of work to go uh, before he's going to wind up being a good NFL quarterback, if ever. I mean, he just did not look good. And this was against some pretty basic defense packages that he was going up against. So... We'll see how things work out for him, but he definitely needs to sit for a year or two behind Flacco before Baltimore can even think about this guy taking the reins, which means they're probably going to be carrying three quarterbacks, most likely going to bring um, Robert Griffin on permanently and let him hang on. Even if Flacco leaves in a couple of years, even if they do like an Alex Smith thing, they may want to have a Robert Griffin type hanging around to continue to try to mentor the guy if, in fact, they decide we want this guy to be our future. And I would think trading back into the first round implies that you definitely want this guy to be the future of your, your franchise, of your team. So we'll see what happens with Lamar Jackson, but it doesn't look like he's going to be at all fantasy ready this year if anybody was thinking, hey, man, maybe I'll take a late-round flyer on this guy. Who knows? Something like that might work out for you. But then again, you could say the same thing. Maybe you should take a late-round flyer on Johnny Asshole. I mean, he looked really, really bad uh, starting from Montreal. I, did any y'all? I don't know if any of y'all even bother looking at CFL games. If they're on TV, I'm going to watch them. I don't actively go and seek them out on the Internet or try to live stream them or anything like that. But this time of year, Thursday nights, uh, ESPN2 usually tries to show some CFL games, and I'll check them out. Old Johnny Asshole, Johnny Football, man, he looked ridiculous out there throwing four interceptions. Um, it was pretty pathetic, which I'm fine with. I can't stand the guy. But who knows, maybe some NFL team will get hard up for a quarterback. They will have multiple injuries, and they'll call him up and say, will not you come and step on the field and throw four interceptions for us? So um, that would be fine with me. I don't really care as long as it's not Carolina. I don't ever want to see that guy in Charlotte ever. But anyway... 
no Lamar Jackson, I would say, this year for fantasy. There are some good quarterbacks out there. I mean, there's some guys with a lot of potential to be top ten guys that you can wind up getting pretty late. So, I mean, what am I saying here? Am I saying that you need to draft a quarterback in the first round? Am I saying you need to draft one uh, to be your keeper, that kind of thing? I don't know. I mean, it's really up to you. It's however you like your team, that kind of thing. In my opinion, I mean, if you drafted a quarterback this year to be your keeper, like in the first round or something like that, you're going to set your team back probably a year or two anyway. I mean, it's just the way that it is. I mean, you look at Packer Backer, um, first year of the league, he took Aaron Rodgers, great keeper, but that first year was pretty tough on him because he was hurting in the running back and receiver department because of it. Now, the next year he was able to do the right thing, take a couple of back-to-back -back running backs, I believe it was, and, and have a pretty strong season. So that happens sometimes, you know, in a keeper league. Sometimes you got to say, I'm going to sacrifice this year and get my guy because I know it's the future of my team. And if I'm going to play in this league for 10 years or whatever, you know, um, maybe that's something you think about doing. Some of you guys that don't have a um, particularly good keeper situation this year, you know, and there are a few of you. And, you know, I can tell you this, I don't envy you. But, you know, some of you with probably not the best keeper situation, you can do something really well in the first round. You can take the best player you've got and then draft what you need in the first round and hope that it really pays off for you and you get a, a top guy. So looking forward to uh, who Matt's going to pick at number one. That's got to be pretty exciting. And, and of course, uh, Drew has got back-to-back -back picks this year, um, picking uh, you know 10th and then 11th, of course. And so that could be very interesting right there as well. He's got a fantastic keeper situation for his self, so we'll see what happens there. Maybe he's looking forward to a really strong season. I mean, he has won before, so perhaps there'll be a two out of three kind of thing for him. But it, it should be a great year, guys. Uh, I'm looking forward to some of these Thursday games. we got quite a few preseason games that are going to happen. I mean, 16 of them, I believe. Um, you know, well, not 16 of them on Thursday, but 16 of them this week, you know, coming in. So, that should be pretty good. You know, I'm excited to take in as many as I can. I know in the past, NFL Network usually shows all of them on replay. So if you've got NFL Network, you can um, take in quite a few of them. You know, if there's one that you particularly wanted to watch, a player that you were interested in, but the game's not in your market, you know, you can probably catch it on the replay. And in the past, they've shown them for free on the website, too. So something to think about. But guys, there's obviously not a whole lot going on in the world of sports. Uh, plenty going on in the world of politics and that kind of thing, but that's not the type of thing that we talk about here. So unless you guys want me to start talking about that, I don't really see any point in bringing it up. I think Josh and I pretty much bring it up just about every day, so uh, he and I uh, get our fill that way. But anyway, uh, boxing though, September 15. We've got the rematch, Triple G and Canelo Part 2. So when will Canelo test positive for some kind of banned substance? And what will he blame this time? You know, last time it was tainted Mexican beef. I mean, what could it be this time? Could it be Flint, uh, Michigan water? You know, could it be any number of things that could cause him to test positive? I don't know. Maybe uh, some kind of moon dust that he ingested while visiting NASA in Houston or something like that. I mean, there's no telling what the man could blame other than himself and trying to get a competitive advantage. I really hope the guy gets knocked the hell out uh, in this one. That would be fantastic. I would love to see Triple G just lay the dude out. It was a pretty funny thing. Um, the crusher fight, uh, he got knocked out, man. He looked pretty overmatched in that fight. If, if you watched it, I um, uh, know at least two of us did. Uh, looked pretty overmatched, though. And, you know, I was reading some of the comments. I was watching the highlights after and reading some of the comments, and immediately people are just going to the, this is what's going to happen to uh, Triple G when he gets in the ring with Canelo. Like, first off, what does that even have to do with anything? Where does that fight even fit into this fight? I mean, it's two totally different fights. Nobody involved in the 15 fight was in this fight, so why does, why does that even compute into this equation? And secondly, not going to happen not going to happen. If Canelo on the gas could not knock the dude out in the first fight, what makes you think he's going to knock him out in the second fight? Uh, that's insane to even think that. So that that's my rant on the boxing thing. As y'all know, um, 
I'm a pretty big boxing fan. I mean, if I had to say at this stage in my life, uh, boxing is probably my favorite sport to watch on TV. Uh, somebody asked me this question uh, a while back, and they said, well, what's your favorite to play? And I said, well, bowling, but I, I can't do that anymore. I mean, most of y'all know that. I uh, had some back problems, wasn't able to continue on with the bowling, um, just as I was getting mediocre, too. So there you go. I did get a 600 game in, though, so that was pretty good uh, before I had to hang it up on account of the back. You know, um, most of y'all that know me know I had a back surgery um, about, well, at this point, about seven years ago now, about maybe about seven and a half, actually. And so it's been a while, but um, three years of bowling uh, consistently like that competitively, it wound up re-aggravating everything. And so I'm still feeling the effects of it. I've been asked a couple of times, do you think you're 100%? Do you think you can come back? Do you think you can bowl again? The answer is uh, straight up no. I know how I feel when I wake up in the morning. It's not nearly as bad as it was um, a December ago, but I can definitely tell you that um, six, seven months ago was pretty bad, and I'm back to where I can walk again. Um, although a little crooked, I mean, my hips are still pretty screwed up looking right now, but it's far less painful than what it was, and so you know, not a big deal, but the answer is I'd probably really screw stuff up if I went back to trying to bowl again, so not even recreationally, I don't even fool with it. I'm throwing a 16-pound ball, you know, and you do that for, you know, a minimum three games and, and league, and then you got to try to find time to practice in the middle of the week, and how many games you're going to run through on that, so, you know, it's just out of the equation. So that's a bummer. But yeah, I mean, we're gearing up for a move-in weekend. That's around the corner. We're doing a lot of trainings at work, so we're staying pretty busy with that. So that's impeding probably some of us that work in Res Life's ability to get things like mock drafts done and stuff like that. But I've, I try to find the time, and I'm hoping you guys are too, because I want everybody to be competitive. I think that's the best way to have some fun in this league is for everybody to at least at least to have a reasonably competitive team. You know, obviously somebody's going to wind up pulling up the tail end of the league. I mean, that's going to happen anyway. But guys, that's about it for tonight. I don't really have a whole lot more to say. I uh, appreciate you guys that are listening. I hope the uh, podcast format is still working for y'all, and we'll be in touch. If for some reason you couple of guys that weren't able to reach out to me, if you can at least just, uh, you know, I don't know, text me or something and confirm that, uh, you know, the 26th at 2 is good for you, uh, let me know, guys. So y'all have a great uh, rest of the week. Like I said, it's Tuesday, so a lot of the week left. Looking forward to a good weekend. Looking forward to some great preseason games, and we'll be in touch.